You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wing 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. You know, we're not just playing for us to win, we're playing for the people who came before us. I love it. Just two uh, hard nosed schools going at it. We know they have athletes out there, but. They're all, we're all playing together and it's clicking. They play physical, they talk, we talk. It's a, it's a live game, I would say that. After a week six where the average margin of victory in the SAC was 46 points, the football gods trying to flip the script this Friday night. As week seven rivalry week in the SAC, no better place to start most years and especially this year then with the Battle of the Bishops, our man Colton Howard joins us with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Colton. That's right, Glenn. And last year at Lures Field, if you remember, it was the Saints knocking off the Knights 43-6. to Now in practice this week, the Knights telling us it's a game they certainly haven't forgotten. But would it be repeats or redemption this time around? Well, it is time to find out. Bishop Lures at Bishop Dwanger, it's your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Lures ranked number one in the state's 2A poll. The Knights 6-0, sitting alone at the top of the SAC standings. Dwanger 4-2, ranked eighth in the state in 4A and trying to keep any chance of winning the victory bell alive. First quarter, the handoff to Sir Hale and Sir, yes, Sir, he's a bad man and he's got the first touchdown of the game. Now, still in the first, Lures back on offense. The handoff again to Sir Hale and the Saints saying, no, Sir. Cole Carey punching the ball loose and Jack Tipman is right there for the scoop and score touchdown to tie this ball game at seven. To the second quarter now, the Knights down by one. It's 21 to 20. Clark throwing a beauty to Antoine Lake in the back of the end zone for the go ahead score with 30 seconds till the break. Lures leading at halftime 27 to 21. Now out of the break in the third quarter, KJ Tipman with the first touchdown to give the Saints the lead. Then on their next possession, this one from 34 yards and he's in there for the score. Dwanger leading 35 to 27. We still got one quarter to go, people, in the fourth quarter. On a third down and long, lures down a field goal. Clark finding his bro, Brody Glenn, on a fourth for his fourth touchdown of the game and giving the Knights its own three-point lead with under six minutes to go in this instant classic. Now, with just 3.6 seconds remaining, the Saints going for a field goal to send this game into overtime, and it's short. No good, and Bishop Lures winning the battle of the Bishops 41 to 38. We played, you know, down to a level that we usually don't play to, but um, you know, we still won. A shout out to the whole team, special teams, all those guys. But it was a, it was a crazy win, and uh, we'll keep getting better and work our tails off for Southside next week. It was something too similar for us, you know. Even though it would have put it into overtime, you know, that that uh, Western Boone game still comes at us. But you know, this was a. This was number one on my list to win of these games this year, and uh, I'm really glad. It's, it's just love and family the whole way. What a great game. Next up, Dwanger is at Snyder next Friday while Lures hosts Southside. Glenn, back to you. All right, thank you, Colton. Two of the top five highest scoring offenses in 6A football, squaring off 5 and 1. Carroll hosting 4 and 2 Homestead, but this was about defense. Carroll 14 to 3 at a half, third quarter. A little trickeration for Doug Dynan's club. Watch Jeff Becker try to pick up the first down. Ooh! Ouch! They rule a late hit on that, and that would uh, extend the drive for Carroll. The gloves coming off. How about that? It would lead to this. Sebastian Lopez with a 20-yard field goal, and Carroll now up two touchdowns, 17-3. to three. Fourth quarter, six minutes to go. Homestead driving Peyton Slavin to Grady Swing. Uh, what's the ruling? They said he had possession. That is a Homestead touchdown. Homestead now down just 17-10. They would get the ball back with two minutes left, but... Carroll would force a turnover on downs, and Carroll in the victory formation for a team known for its offense. Carroll does it with defense tonight, beating rival Homestead 17-10. to And it was a team win. We all played together. We knew this team was good, but we just knew we were better, and that's just plain and simple, and we just came out here and competed. They were a great team. We were a great team. I mean, from the second day, we all played good. They came passing in, in, in the second half, and we shut it down. First half, we shut down the run, so it was just all great all around. Yeah, Carroll defense was light out in that, lights out in that one. Spooler Stadium supremacy on the line. Snyder and Northrop at 4-1. The Panthers very much in the hunt for the SAC title with games against Dwenger and Lures still remaining after tonight. 
First play in the first quarter. C.J. Davis, though, doing it for the guys in orange with the interception, obviously to keep it scoreless. Then it's Snyder's Tyrese Brown. After the Panthers got the ball back, that's a touchdown to make it seven zip Snyder, and the Bruins would get plenty of Tyrese Brown in this one. Second quarter, it's Brown again. He had 12 carries, 133 yards, and four touchdowns on the ground. It's 28-0 Snyder. Second quarter, Norfolk. Trying to get something going offensively. Keon Bates to Jaden Shank. That's a big first down into Panther territory. And then Bates looking for Dane Kilby to get Northrop on the board. Yes, but it's Snyder taking care of business. 42 to 12 at Schuler Stadium. Well, it's a rivalry that started back in 1927. Northside versus Southside, the 95th regular season meeting. Of course, we're talking about the totem pole game. First quarter, Jalen Lattimore up and over and in for six. And the Archers, yeah, they lead 7-0. Second quarter, though, Northside gets on the board here. Jonte Lambert. And Lambert takes the handoff and breaks the big one down the sideline. Legends tie things up at seven. Later in the second quarter, Donovan Williams, the Northside quarterback. Watch him fake the pitch here, sells it well, and then finds Tay Tay Johnson, who just picked up an offer from Iowa State earlier this week. That's a touchdown, and the totem pole will reside at Northside. 29-26, Legends over Archers. Not sure how much of a rivalry it is, but uh, two very different styles. The ground and pound of Wayne hosting the air it out offense of Concordia. First quarter, Sean Collins, he's tough. He punches it in from short yardage. 8-0 Wayne after the two-point conversion. Then it's Collins again. We're still in the first quarter. Collins has already got two touchdowns and Wayne up 14-0. Concordia, though, Mike Eschbach's squad striking back. You mentioned the air attack. And it's Dontrell Johnson from Eli Maddox. And don't tell Dontrell he won't be tackled because this guy is going to take it 62 yards to the house, 14 to 7 at that point. But in the second quarter, Christian Trimble. Trimble be nimble. He's in for the touchdown. And Wayne would hang on in another good one. The SAC showing out tonight. 28-26 generals over the cadets. Week 7 for the SAC now officially in the books. And outside of the Summit City, conference races starting to shake out as well. In the Northeast State, Leo looking to stay undefeated as the Lions make their final trip to Craig Baum Stadium. In the ACAC, Adam Central at Southern Wells, while South Adams looking to get back on track at home against Jade County. In the NECC, yeah, we made the drive north as Eastside pushes perfection against Fremont, while Busco and Central Noble battle in Albion. And the W Trophy up for grabs in Warsaw. We got all that and much, much more next in the zone. Get young. We're the Southern Wells Crazies. Stay tuned for more highlights. Yeah! I like the. Uh... Well, the good folks in Huntington will be saying goodbye to historic Craig Baum Stadium in the very near future. Meanwhile, the Leo Lions are hoping to say hello to the NEA Championship fairly shortly. The undefeated Lions in the conference driver's seat as the Purple Pride ranked second in the 4A state poll this week, heading into a date with the Vikings first quarter. You know what Leo's going to do. They just do it so well. It's Carson Hepner up the middle. Hepner had 144 yards at the first of his two touchdowns, and Leo up 8-0. Leo, not just offense. They can do it with D. Ryland Crawford going to play his college football at Illinois State. He shows you why with the interception to keep Huntington North off the board. And then it's Mason Sharon. Sharon had a big night as well. 191 yards, two touchdowns. This one goes for 64 Leo up 16-0 as the Lions stay perfect. 37-6 over the Vikings. At Columbia City, the Eagles looking to get back on track. Same deal with a stacked East Noble squad. And this one was one of the better games we saw tonight. Third quarter off the punt return. Nick Munson cannot be stopped. The West Welker of the Northeast 8. He's all the way to the house on this punt return. And East Noble, who are down... Up 13 to 10. Still in the third. Greg Bolt looking. Greg Bolt finding Ryan Elston. And Elston 
would be down inside the 10, and that would lead to this, Columbia City with the field goal, and that knots the game at 13 all. But in the fourth, Ethan Nichols would dive in for the score. That ends up being the game-winning touchdown as East Noble escapes Columbia City. Knights 19, Columbia City 16. In the ACAC, Adam Central coming off a win in last Friday's game of the week. The Jets taking the show on the road to Panito. First quarter action, it's the Jets getting it to Alex Curry, and then it's Curry looking spicy. This is 21 yards. He's untouched, and the Jets up 7-0. Still on the first. Southern Wells back to punt. They punt it to Alex Curry, and that, well, that's a problem if you're a Raiders fan because Curry has a convoy, and Curry's in. A punt return for a touchdown to make it 14-0 Jets. More in the first quarter from the Jets. This is Ryan Tester from nine yards out to make it 20-0. And Adam Central, no problem with Southern Wells. 67-0 the final in this one. South Adams coming off back-to-back -back losses, but those would have been Rose Central and Adams Central, both on the road, both top three teams in the 1A state poll. The Starfires back and burn to get things on track against Jay County. At least they were hoping they would. Second quarter, South Adams leading 21-6. A.J. Dole looked like he was uh, going to be taken down. He is not A.J. Dole. Nothing dull about that run. 41 yards to give South Adams a 28-6 lead. Second quarter still. Owen Warner looking and finding Maverick Somerset for a touchdown. This one goes 31 yards. Owen Warner, five touchdown passes under center tonight for the Starfires. He's 35 to six after that score. Then some special teams. Brady Beal, he blocks it and Brady Beal jumps on it. Brady Beal doing everything in that highlight. It's a touchdown. And guess what? South Adams is back on track. The Starfires top Jay County, 42 to 13. In the NECC, Central Noble off to a 6-0 start for the first time since 2003. Cougars hosting 4-2 Busco in the Battle of Borderline. First quarter, Central Noble trying to get something going, but the fumble hits the turf. Busco's Gavin Pusenbeck recovers and ball to Busco. Later in the first, that guy's not impressed. It's Wyatt Marks. Busco scoring the short rushing touchdown. He broke the plane, and Busco on the board first, up 7-zip. Second quarter, Central Noble firing back. Tyler Schisler. Schisler to Ashton Smith, and watch Smith do the rest down the sideline. He goes 44 yards into your living room for the touchdown. Two-point conversion, though, no good, so Busco still leading one by one, seven to six. Second quarter, a little misdirection from that Busco run game. Ethan Smith would score, and Busco knocks Central Noble from the ranks of the unbeaten 21-12 Eagles over Central Noble. Central Noble will head to Eastside next Friday. The unbeaten Blazers tuning up for that one with a trip to Fremont. And Laban Davis, I'm not going to say he's a shoe-in to make the Fab 15 because we do ask the coaches to vote, but uh, he's pretty much a shoe-in. Laban Davis with the touchdown run. That was from nine yards out to make it 7-0 Blazers. Coming the other way, it's Fremont picking up a first down. That was Buck Berman with the pass. And, well, Fremont moving the football well there, but unfortunately tonight, it would get goose egg because that Blazers defense is pretty darn good. And the offense, exceptional as well for East Side. This is Davis from 33 yards out. He had three rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns, so five total TDs from the QB. As East Side, no problem. Fremont, 49 to 0. Blazers on top. At the Hive, Angola stepping out of conference play this week. The 2 and 4 Hornets hosting 3 and 3 Mishawaka Marion. Historically, a really good program. Angola's Tyler Call in the second quarter calls his own number. It's a good idea. He picks up a first down for Andy Thomas and company, but 28-0 is the score. Mishawaka Marion on top. This is still in the second quarter. It's Bryce Lasney. Lassane, excuse me, to Blake Oberg. And well, that's a 30-yard pickup, but Mishawaka Marion would not score on that drive. However, they did lead 28-0 at the half third quarter. Lassane. Looking and finding Greg Atkinson. That's a touchdown to make it 35 nil as Angola would fall on this one, 42 to nothing. Our final stop is George Fisher Field. The W Trophy on the line, as always, between Warsaw and Wallace. The Tigers taking it to the Warriors early, courtesy of the ground game. It's Warsaw's Jace Sawyer up the middle. 
That's a 27-yard score in Warsaw on the board first. They're up 7-0. And then you don't see this every day. You don't see it every week. Warsaw goes to the air. Yeah, Bart Curtis calling this one. Tucker Curtis to Julius Jones. That's a touchdown of 44 yards. And Warsaw now up 14-0. And they just kept coming. We're still in the first quarter. It's Curtis with the keeper. He's in for a touchdown to make it 21-0 Warsaw. And still in the first. It's Sawyer again, 28 yards on the score as Warsaw rolls 49-7 over Wallasey. Stay tuned. Your Gem of the Night, courtesy of Peter Franklin Jewelers, is up next. We're the Central Noble Cougars, and we're ready to fight. Welcome back to the Highlight Zone. Here's your Gem of the Night. Yeah! Well, last week it was a dagger at the landing strip, a pick six by Nick Neuenschwander to end the first half as it gave Adam Central an insurmountable 42-zip lead on the way to a big win against uh, county rival South Adams. Now, could we top it this week as the bar has been set? With that, we present you with your latest gem of the night, courtesy of Peter Franklin Jewelers. And yeah, Battle of the Bishops, fourth quarter. Lures with the go-ahead touchdown. It's Carson Clark to Brody Glenn to put Lures up by three. They would go on to win by three. So that is your game-winning score as Lures stays undefeated. Clark the Shark, he's good in the light, but better in the dark. Brody Glenn on the receiving end of your Gem of the Night. Next week's games, Dwenger at Snyder, Columbia City, Leo, Central Noble at Eastside, Northwood at Warsaw. We'll have all that and much, much more week eight here on the Highlight Zone. See you then.